Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh And very good day Hey everything Okay we are Towards the end of Chapter 3 and Only theory left So topic 3.4 Is about root cross sectional Element Let's get started Let us look into uh, the typical Element of highway cross section this diagram shows a single carriageway road, which it has one lane per direction. If you can see here, there is a slight gradient, which we call as camber, which help for drainage purposes. So, if during rainy days, the water will flow to the roadside drain. So, next to the traffic lane is the road shoulder. And next to the road shoulder till certain distance is the reserve area. Same goes to the other side of the lane. So, from reserve area to the next reserve area, that is we establish as right of way. So, let us look into the second types of highway cross section for dual carriageway road, which it has a road median and traffic lane. Again, it has a shoulder and reserve area. So, next to the road shoulder is normally uh, where the roadside drain is located. So, from end to end, that is what we call as right of way. This is based on Arahan Teknik Jalan, a typical cross section for urban area. For example, this is for U6, which is expressway at urban area. So, this is the cross section for one direction, which in the middle, it has a median, then the carriageway, which uh, the length with around 7 meter, and it is probably two number of lane. So, next to the carriageway is reserve area for future widening. Then, they have a road shoulder for landscape probably, then the drain area, service reserve, then it has a landscape corridor, motorcycle lane, landscape corridor again, and bicycle lane. This is under ideal condition. But in real practice, due to limited land area, so sometimes we don't have all these sections. We only have up to service reserve. So the second type is measure collected at urban area, U4, which this is the median, the middle of the road. And the width of the median is around 2.5 meter. Then each direction has two number of lane, which 3.25 meter lane width. Then they have road shoulder, landscape corridor and drain reserve. The other type is local street, which there is no median in the middle, just a single carriageway for each direction then it has a road shoulder for emergency sometimes landscape corridor and drain reserve so this is under ideal condition but in real practice i would like to highlight that we have to follow the space constraint okay let us move to the next subtopic which is the uh, provision for cyclists and pedestrian so basically cyclists and pedestrian they are a vulnerable road user so let us look into the overview of bicycle and pedestrian lane so the bicycle and pedestrian lane is actually that part of highway specifically reserved for the exclusive use of bicycle rider and in malaysia normally the bicycle lane is either located at recreational area or at city center such as in Kuala Lumpur and Shah Alam. So bicycle lane can be delineated by stripping, signing or pavement marking. This lane should always be one way with traffic. Minimum width under either condition is 4 to 5 feet. And the design speed according to Ashto is 20 mile per hour for paved path 
but for arahan teknik jalan for the moped like a motorcycle and the safe speed is up to 60 km per hour okay let us look into this the, the guideline for types of crossing required it is based on the number of pedestrian and also the traffic volume one way at peak hour so let's say the number of pedestrian is less than 50 and the number of traffic is less than 1000 then we can just install an ordinary level crossing but if the number of pedestrian range between 50 to 100 and traffic volume one way at peak hour range between 100 to 2000 then the signalized level crossing is warranted and if the number of pedestrian is greater than 100 and the traffic volume is greater than 2000, the road need overhead crossing or underpass. This is the additional school level crossing. The installation of a full traffic signal school level crossing should be considered when the following warrants are met. Either there are 500 vehicles per hour on the road and 100 school children per hour crossing during the peak hour or 500 vehicles per hour on the road during the peak hour and a minimum of 500 school children during the entire day. Where the above warrant for a full traffic signal school level crossing is not met, an unsignalized crossing must always be provided. Just a typical bicycle lane cross section. We can see here if the bicycle lane with a curb street with parking. So normally at the end of the road is the parking area. Next to the parking area is the bike lane before the motor vehicle lane. But for the curb street without parking, next to the motor vehicle lane is the bike lane, which next to the curb. Well, for the street or highway without curb or gutter, Normally, the bike lane also located next to the motor vehicle lane, but not on the road shoulder because at a uh, rural area, the road shoulder is not paved. So, this is the guide for development of bicycle facilities, Ashto, Washington, DC. Okay, we move to intersection design, grid and grid separated intersection. Intersections are important part of a road system. Their capacity controls the volume of traffic within the network. And the term intersection refer to both intersection and junction, where two or more road cross or meet. So let us look into the types of conflict. If two or more vehicles are moving simultaneously, they have a probability to involve in traffic conflicts. There are four types of intersection conflicting maneuver. First is diverging. Second is merging. Third is crossing. And the last but not least is waving. And the number of potential conflicts depends on number of approaches, Number of lane on each approach, types of signal control, extent of channelization, and movement permitted. There are several factors that could influence design of grade and grade separated intersection. So first, traffic volume and characteristic. What is the design peak hour volume? What is the need? of commercial vehicles should be considered, operating speed and turning path requirement, types of traffic control, pedestrian buses requirement, and second is about topography and environment, which alignment and grade of approach roads is adequate, need of drainage system, and extent of interference with public utilities, proper access. Third is economic. Variation should be justified by commensurate benefit to traffic. Human factor, 
for the upgrading an old road, drivers tend to act according to effect. They tend to follow natural path of movement and may become confused when surprised. The next slide is about desirable minimum spacing, which depends on the waving distance, storage length required for queuing traffic, and also the length of right turning lane. So, based on this table, which extracted from Arahan Technic Jalan 11 through 87, we can see based on the location, this is the road hierarchy with the spacing of up to 3 km. So, there are several types of intersection, which at grid intersection, grid separated intersection, and interchange. So, at great intersection, a guide to the design of at great intersection is Arahan Technic Jalan 11 Road 87. So by definition, an at great intersection is a junction at which two or more traffic exits cross at the same level or grade. So with area of high or fast traffic, an at great intersection normally requires a traffic control device such as a stop sign or traffic light or traffic signal to manage conflicts. This is an example of a grid intersection. As you can see here, all direction land on the same grid. Another one example of a grid intersection, although it is looks like uh, interchange, but then they are all on the same grid. And this is the most popular which cross intersection that land on the same grid, which regulate by traffic signal to avoid conflicts. So basically, the at grid intersection is a junction at which two or more transport exits like here more than one cross at the same level so we move to great separated intersection where if you want to exit let's say in highway they provide you a dedicated lane to exit so Great separated intersection, the definition, great separation is the process of aligning and junction of two or more transport axes at different height. To avoid disrupting the traffic flow on other transit routes when they cross each other, also known as interchange, there are two types of separation structure, which is the overpass and underpass. The overpass, also known as flyover, while underpass, we call it as tunnel. So, just an example of underpass and overpass. Then, this is uh, one of the types of interchange. There are four types of interchange, actually. The first one is three leg interchanges, followed by diamond interchange, flower leaf, and also directional and semi-directional. So I will show you different configuration of interchanges. So like this, it is a trumpet. This is three leg directionals. This is single point of an intersection, partial clover leaf, and also for diamond, it has a four direction. Then full clover leaf and also all directional, for legs. So channelization. What is the channelization and what is the purpose of channelization? Channelization is the direction of traffic flow at intersection to definite path by means of traffic marking, island or others. And unchannelized intersection is the simplest type but is the most dangerous and inefficient because the distance between vehicle horizontally is close from one to the other. So, 
This is an example of channelization. To make a right turn, so there is a road marking showing that this is for right turn. And as you can see here, this chevron is also known as channelization. Channelization to make a right turn. Because in Malaysia, we are uh, a right hand drive country. So to make a right movement is much more critical. So sometimes we need the channelization to make the lateral distance between one vehicle to the other vehicle much more wider. So this is the effect of channelization. The distance, horizontal distance between one vehicle to the other vehicle could be improved by installing the channelization. So this is before channelization and after channelization. So vehicle can make a right turn clearly by having more gap between one vehicle to the other vehicle on the opposite direction. Purpose of channelization is to serve the following purposes. First, separation of conflicts. Second, to control of angle of conflicts. Third, for control of speed, protection of traffic, protection of pedestrian, elimination of excessive intersectional area, blockage of prohibited movement, and the location of traffic control devices. There are several principles to design the channelization, which the design channelized intersection should also be governed by the following criteria. First, motorists should not be required to make more than one decision at a time or else it can cause conflict. Second, sharp reverse curve and turning path greater than 90 degrees should be avoided. Merging and waving area should be as long as possible but other area of conflict between vehicles should be reduced to minimum. Crossing traffic stream that do not wave or merge should intersect at 90 degree but a range of 60 to 120 is acceptable. Next, the intersecting angle of merging stream should be such that adequate side distance is provided. Refuge island for turning vehicle should not interfere with the movement of through vehicles, so you have to plan accordingly when the right turn will make a movement and when the major road will make a movement. Prohibited turn should be blocked wherever possible so that there is no people or citizen disobey to the instruction. Decision on the location of essential traffic control devices should be a component of the design process. So that's all for chapter 3. I wish you all the best and good luck in this course ECG 564 Highway and Traffic Engineering. Dr. Azrina is here. Bye. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and very good day. See ya. Bye.